matter how great or small, he's the master of them Come on, sing. 
is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. So come and bow. Hallelujah. We're about to start taking communion. Amen. So I ask that you prepare your hearts and your minds. For this is a sacred time and a sacred moment. The Bible says if you eateth or drinketh this unworthily, you eateth or drinketh damnation unto yourself. Now initially when I heard that scripture, in my ignorance, I thought that that meant that I should avoid taking communion because I needed to get some things right with God. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. In this moment right now, if there are things that need to be corrected with God, this is the time, the moment, the season, and the hour to get it right. So that when you eat and drink of his blood, you can eat and drink of it worthily. Amen. So as we take this communion today, I ask you not to walk in condemnation because that's not what God did. That's not what God did for us. That's not what he wants for us. Even the son that left home and went in and wasted all of his money, he was living in condemnation where he was afraid to come back. But at some point he got himself together and he came back to his father. And the Bible says his father ran out to meet him. So right here in this moment, if there's things in your heart that you need to get right with God, God is standing here and he's ready to run out to meet you. We just need you to take the first step. We just need you to take the first step so that as you walk up here, you may leave your seat covered in mess. By the time you get up here, seek God on correcting that thing so that when you eat and you drink of his blood, you can eat and drink of it worthily. Father, as we prepare to take this, your blood and this, this, your body, a representation of the sacrifice that was made for us, God. Father, we offer up our hearts as sacrifice to you, O oh God. We give you permission to be a surgeon, O oh God, to remove the things that ought not to be there, to fix whatever is broken, to mend whatever the enemy has tried to destroy. Right now, before we even leave our seats, God, we give you permission, O oh God, to step into our hearts and fix anything that you need to fix, O oh God. Father, we repent for everything that we did that was not like you, oh God. We cast down every evil imagination and every evil report that we accepted from the enemy as truth. And we speak the word of faith in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you were creating us a clean heart. Father, and renew your right spirit within us, oh God. Right now, oh God, in this moment, your living vessels are opening up ourselves to be submitted to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, begin to come, begin to come begin to come right now oh god we ask that you will do a surgeon god we ask you will be a surgeon in this house oh god try our hearts oh god fix what is broken oh god mend what the enemy has tried to destroy oh god remove every weight and every stronghold and every burden in the name of jesus everybody under the sound of my voice oh god right now father we ask that you will create clean hearts in this place father we want to lift up pure hands and pure hearts to you oh god so right now in this moment as we take this holy communion oh god we ask that you will clean us up and wash us up in your blood ah uh, we bless your name god ah uh, we bless your name god ah uh, we bless your name oh god we bless your name, O King. O oh God, you're mighty and you're awesome. O oh God, you're mighty and you're awesome. We thank you that as we stand before you right now, God, that we have the opportunity to get it right. We thank you, God, that we can now stand boldly. We can go boldly before the throne of God. We thank you we ain't got to shimmy into your presence unworthily like the heathens do. But we can come boldly into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Has everybody been served? Amen. God, we thank you, Father. We thank you for clean hearts, God. We thank you, oh God. The night that Jesus was betrayed... He sat with the disciples. And I don't know if y'all get the revelation behind that, but just in case you think you are unworthy still, I want to remind you that Judas ate too. 
just in case, just in case the enemy is still trying to bring up the stuff from your past. Because as of about two minutes ago, that was your past. We in, a, we, in, we, in, we in the present now. Just in case the enemy is trying to bring up your past, remind him that Judas ate too. The same Judas that Jesus knew was going to portray him, he still made a way. He still made a way for Judas to get it right, even though he knew what he was going to do. Every single time, he, I get listen, if you got to write that in your phone, re- Judas ate too. <laughs> he sat at the table with him. <laughs> That's the Jesus that I serve. The night that he was betrayed, he, he took the bread and he broke it. He broke it. He broke it for every sin that he knew was coming. He broke it for every problem that he knew was coming. He broke it for every bit of disappointment that he knew was coming. He broke it for every lie that might come out your mouth. He broke it for everything that you might do that would hurt his heart. He broke it for everything. Even before you knew him, he knew you. And he said, this is now my body broken for you. Bruised for you. This is the sacrifice that I've made for you. Let us eat together. Ah, God, I thank you. And then he took the cup. Now see, there was power in the broken body. But ooh, it's something about that blood. (laughs) Ha! It's something about the blood of Jesus. He took it and he said, for without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sins. What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Somebody say it's nothing but the blood. See, when you get traditional blood on white, it stains it. But the way Jesus' blood is set up, you came out that wash wrinkle-free, springtime fresh, with not a stain on you. Somebody celebrate the power of the blood. As we raise this up, we say thank you for the blood. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Let us drink together. Father God, as we've done this today, we thank you that in you, all things are made new. We thank you that our past is now gone. We thank you that everything that is behind us is yet behind us. And from today, the first Sunday in March, we are declaring that all things moving forward are made new. God, we ask that you will bless us, God. We ask that you will continue to purify us, God. And we ask that you will remind us of this moment where you took a, took a, took a step out of eternity to come down here in time and let us know that in you, we are new. Father, we bless you and we honor you and we glorify your name and we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity and most of all, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us. It is in faith that we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord and good morning, Rock Church. Good morning. Hey, good to see y'all in what they call the land of the living. Praise God. Praise God. Can we give God a quick victory shout right now? Yeah. Come on, somebody said your praise was a weapon. And I thought y'all was ready to fight in the name of Jesus. The Bible said God inhabits the praises of his people. And I don't know what you're dealing with, and I don't know what you're facing, but you ought to get a victory shout on your lips right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Give him his glory. Give him his honor right now. Come on. That's your weapon. That's your weapon. Come on. Come on. That's your weapon. That's your weapon. Come on. Somebody said he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on. He's worthy to be praised. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. My God, my God, my God. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Somebody said, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house. In the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Yeah, I feel like smacking a bear right now with the name of Jesus. 
Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, Rock Church. I'm ready to preach, but I know we got some formalities we got to deal with in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday. It's Super Sunday. Praise God. Y'all missed that right there. That's, 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 uh, you missed it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in the name of Jesus. Amen. March 20th, the singles will be meeting. All right, praise God for the two. Amen. There we go. Amen. Amen. We are ready. We are motivated. It's not going to be what you think. Me and Minister Tiff have been having some conversations. and Get ready. Get ready. Because, you know, there's some stuff going on. And some of y'all just missing it. You're missing it. Amen, Minister Tiff? They just missing it. You know, just missing, missing the signs, missing the signals and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Amen. 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 We're going to talk. Huh? What single mean? Single. I'm married. I'm married. Uh, yeah, I'm married in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So seven o'clock, we will be here in the building. Praise God. Minister Marcel, can you give us the handles in a second of all the handles that we have or uh, YouTube and all that stuff? This is what I need y'all to do. We need y'all to start going on YouTube, going on Facebook. We need y'all to start liking the page. Watch this. Here you go. You're about to get some real easy ministry credit. Amen. Okay. Share it. Share it. You'd be surprised how that may have been something somebody needed. They probably couldn't make it into the house of God, but yet they got their word because all you did was click on one button and shared it and subscribe. That's it. Come on, Justice, Marcel, and the whole team, TJ, they working hard, y'all. So when it's all said and done, not only supporting the ministry, but you're getting some evangelism credit. Okay, y'all missed it. Y'all never thought about it like that. You just shared the word of God and didn't say a word. Okay, that was, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. That's real simple, real simple. Amen? Amen. Well, praise God. It is offering time. Amen. Praise God. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the handles? I didn't even give you a chance to say all the handles. It was what? There we go. We got uh, YouTube. He put it up on the screen. There it is. So some of y'all can do it right now. At Rock Church Detroit. So if you ain't known that, you can subscribe right now. R A T now. Right now. There it is. Subscribe right now. We should not having non members being more supportive. Amen. Than the members. Amen. Praise God. We've got some internet members or social media members and stuff like that. So that's the YouTube. Instagram is what we are. Instagram, if you're on Instagram, go there now. Go ahead, follow. Amen. Amen. What's the other one? That's it? Uh, and then, of course, Facebook. Facebook is just Rock Church International. There you go. There you go. Now, praise God. That's interesting that we're talking about that. Say it again. Yes. Not on tic- we going on TikTok? We are on TikTok. What is TikTok? Um, okay, this is a little more complicated. All right. Yeah, they're going to have to put that on the screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple of underscores. Two underscores. So eventually, Justice will hook it up and put it on the screen. Amen. Amen. Make it easy for everybody. Amen. Will that work? That work? Amen. With that being said, next week with Super Sunday, we've got four projects we're working on. Everybody say four projects. One of them is lighting. Because we're on social media, we got quite a few followers and stuff like that. And we need to be able to present the gospel in a brighter way. I'm going to try it again. In a brighter way. Praise God. Praise team. Y'all just, y'all was, y'all was wearing it out. But it's a little dark up there for them. You know what I'm saying? So we need to make it a little bit lighter. Praise God. We got to put some light. So it is what it is. Amen. 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 Praise God. We got to get a new hot water tank. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, What was the fourth? Oh, the men's bathroom got to be redone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The brother should have been saying something like, amen, reverend, pastor, whoever you be. We need to fix that. Amen. 
And then last but not least, we want to replace this carpet. This is the big one right here. This is the big one because I need y'all to catch this. This is this carpet. If you look at it, it's symbolic. OK, <laughs> you're going to be mother bird. Praise God. Make sure we take care of the carpet. It's symbolic. It's symbolic to the ministry. OK, the ministry has been stepped on. It's been walked on. It's been worn out. People have brought some stuff from the outside, brought it in here and wiped it on the ministry. Praise God. Amen. And it's time to redo some things. Amen. Amen. So the first thing and y'all said last week, we want to go gray. Amen. So we're going to go dark gray. Praise God. So that's what we're doing for next week for Super Sunday. Praise God. What's the goal? The goal is ten thousand dollars. Somebody say that's real easy. Go, go ahead, Elder Day Just write the check for ten thousand and we done. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So we believe in God that we're going to make this happen for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So right now it's offering time. Please go to Givelify under Rock Church International or go to Cash App, dollar sign Rock Church INT in the name of Jesus. And I do not hear a song being sung. Otis is over here chilling. Amen. <laughs> Where's Marcel? He back there. He already left. Don't worry about it. We'll do it next week. Don't worry. The musician already left. Amen. Amen. So praise God. What is that? Proverbs 18, 16. It says a man's gift. It makes room for. So every time you so every time you give, you ought to be declaring it's making room for me. It's making room. Something's opening up. Something's taking place. Something is happening. Every time you give, you ought to be having that mindset in the name of Jesus. It said a man's gift maketh room for him. And then it said and bringeth him. Before great men in the name of Jesus. Amen. You want to do it? You got it? Everybody sing bless. There it is. Bless. Bless. Y'all going to Acapulco? We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Blessed late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Everybody, everybody, yeah. Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around and around. And around, and around, and around. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Father. Yeah, yeah. We give you glory and honor right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for those that were able to give. And thank you right now in the name of Jesus. So right now, we speak to our tithes, our seed, our first fruits, and our, our tithes and offerings. And we tell it to go and grow. And we'll see you real soon. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. I need to get back. Somehow we need to get back, and we're going to do this real quick. In the name of Jesus, we call our members from the north, south, east, and west right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Yeah, we call them in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We declare right now, healing right now in the name of Jesus. For every attack right now in the name of Jesus. We declare deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we declare healing in this house right now with the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Father, we give you honor and glory right now. Now, Father, I thank you right now that you've allowed me to come and preach right now. That you've anointed me to preach. And, Father, we thank you that your, your sheep are not just anointed to hear, but also anointed to do your word, Father. Yeah, anointed to do your word. We, we've got to start doing your word in the name of Jesus. So, Father, right now, we just thank you right now for what we're doing is actually illegal in some countries. But we thank you for the freedom and the liberty to do this in the United States of America. Ask that you would think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. None of me, but all of you. Holy Spirit, you know you're welcome in this place. Continue to move up and down every aisle, every row. Whatever's wrong, make it right. Touch, heal, and deliver. Now, Father, right now, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you right now for the anointing in this house to remove every burden and destroy every yoke right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I will be preaching faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please you. So we declare results right now in the name of Jesus. 
And as a unified body of believers, we declare the devil is defeated. And Jesus is still Lord. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Praise God. Let's go to work, y'all. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Romans. Woo, Romans. Woo-wee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today, what we're going to talk about, my God, I feel good right now. I feel good in the name of Jesus. Try to take my time. Amen. And what we want to talk about, is this a catastrophe or an opportunity? Is this a catastrophe or an opportunity? What you facing right now, that's the question. And it's based on how you're going to look at this thing. I wish I had some believers that was ready to shout the victory on that right now with the name of Jesus. Is this a catastrophe or opportunity? What you facing right now? Come on, ask your neighbor, is that really a catastrophe? Or is it an opportunity? I declare something, my God, you got to change the way you look at stuff. You got to change the way you think, because some of us been in so many situations, we think if it ain't one thing, it's another. It seems like our life been full of catastrophes, and God is saying, change the way you think. You need to start realizing this is an opportunity for me to show myself strong. This is an opportunity for me to get involved. Watch this. But the key is changing the way you think. When I sat back and realized the stuff that we had to do, it's like, man, is this a catastrophe? Is that a catastrophe? Is that a catastrophe? And God said, no. It's an opportunity. Y'all missed your moment to shout. Because God is saying, I can do it without you. Oh, y'all don't understand. But I always want to give my children the opportunity to get blessed while I'm moving. While I'm doing stuff, it's an opportunity for you to get blessed in the process. Because God can do it without your $2.50. He can do it without, but he's saying, I'm giving you a chance. My God, I wish I had some believers. Watch this. To get involved, watch this, as I'm moving. Let's go to Romans. Go ahead, put it on the screen. Yeah. Change the way you think. Look at your neighbor and say, change the way you think. Let's go, DPS. Put your finger in their face. Come on, tell them, change the way you think. A lot of times you're looking at stuff wrong. You're looking at it wrong. I'm so tired of this car. Whoa, you better thank God that you got a car first off. Let's slow that down right off the back. you looking at this all wrong. You complaining about that job? Some folks wish they could get hired to work where you work at. Change the way you think. Watch this. In order for change to take place, there's got to be changes. Amen. Here we go. Go to Romans. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh -wee. Romans. What did I say? 8 and 28. This is the key right here. <laughs> we need to see if we get past these first three words. These three words. <laughs> and we know. See, we need to stop right there because everybody don't know. Some folks are asking why instead of knowing. Oh, you missed your moment to shout. Come on, y'all, because we'll sit back and keep saying, why this happened to me? Why is this going on? Why is this taking place? But if you read the scripture and look at it correctly, and we know, my God, that all things, yeah. whew, my God, work together. For the good. Here's a pin note. He didn't say it was going to always feel good. But you need to know it's working for your good. It's working. It's working. It's working. Oh, I feel like preaching right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you need to employ your trouble right now. Y'all missed it. <laughs> if it's working, then it ought to work for me. So y'all been looking at trouble as if it was working against you, and you need to start saying, no, it's working for me. Moses, when you get to the Red Sea, don't be troubled by it. That Red Sea is going to work for you. It's going to be some good, my God. See, you thought that Red Sea was blocking you. But that thing going to open up and handle some problems that's been chasing you. Scripture says that we know that all things work together for the good. To them that love God. That's a pen note. Now, first off, we need to make sure you love God. Because if you don't love God, then I can't say it's working for your good. Okay, I lost my crowd on that one. And we know that all things work together. 
even though it don't feel good. You need to know that God is pretty good. He's pretty good at bringing out some good in some troubling times. He's gifted at that. That's what he's known for, that he can make a way out of no way. And he's a bridge over troubled water. I wish I had some believers in here. He's my help. Somebody said he's a doctor. Come on. Come on. He's a lawyer when I need a lawyer. He knows how to bring some good out of me. Bible say when the enemy comes in like a flood, he'll lift up a standard against them. He says this, for them that are that love God to them that are the called. <laughs> the called, watch this, y'all, according to not your purpose. But you called according to his purpose. His purpose might be, I might need you to go in the hospital room. I need you to die for three seconds. See, ain't nobody going to sign up for that. We want to sign up. Yeah, Lord, I need you to bless me with a new house. Show yourself strong. But he said, can you die for me for three seconds on the table? Come on, y'all. I'm preaching to somebody right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to remember, it's all for his purpose. That, see, see, that might be the problem right there. See, the thing is, you're so worried about your reputation instead of his purpose. See, if you go through the scriptures, everybody in the Bible, their reputation was at stake. But at the end, God's glory was revealed in their life. <laughs> Can you imagine Joseph going through all that hell? Not for his purpose, but for God's purpose. Can you imagine Daniel being thrown in the lion's den? And all you did was live right there. My God, I'm preaching to somebody right now. <laughs> all you did was live right, and they threw you in a den full of lions. Can I get a witness that the Shadrach, Meshach, and the Abednego, the Bible said when they came out that thing, they didn't even smell like smoking. When Daniel came out the lion's den, he had no hurt. And I'm telling you right now, if you look at this thing correctly, by the time you come out of this thing, people are not going to even believe that you went through anything. You're going to have to tell them what you have already gone through. Some of y'all don't even look like what you've already been through. If your neighbor really was to tell you their testimony, you might get up and move your seats. Because everybody in here got a story to tell. And some of y'all almost don't believe it yourself. If you, if you had not lived it, there were some things you didn't even know you was going to survive. And you was like, Lord, if you get me out of this one. But as you look back over your life, you realize God is good, church. There's some stuff in your life you almost don't believe it if you didn't live it. You're not supposed to be here. Go sit up here and tell people that you look cancer in the eye and got the victory? Yes, Lord. But we got to understand. Come on, mother been in Egypt. Don't even look like it. Singing in the choir and can't get care no. They had knee surgery, hip surgery, and she was over there the other day getting it on. Sign her up to put her on the jet team. <laughs> she ready to do the jit. <laughs> Is this a catastrophe or an opportunity? We ought to know that all things. Quit looking at stuff as catastrophes. It's an opportunity for God to show up. When this building got destroyed, we was thinking catastrophe. And God was saying, watch me work. <laughs> Ah, you ain't going to just get this building, but you're going to remodel this one, remodel that one, and then buy the two on the corner. But you got to learn how to see things right. Quit looking at everything as a catastrophe. When I'm weak. It's a job for God. If I can't, do, come on, y'all, wish I had somebody. If I can't do it, that must mean it's a job for God to do it. Let's work the text. Y'all ready? That's the cheese sticks. Everybody say cheese sticks. All right, let's go to my favorite character in the Bible. 
Let's go to Dirty Dave. First Samuel 17, 25. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like running up in here. We need an organ. We need an organ going on. I'm feeling real churchy right about now. <laughs> here we go. I don't know what your giant is, but I need you to put your giant in this story. And you need to put your name where David's name is at. So if your name is Cletus, when you see David, you ought to put Cletus in the story. Got it? And your Goliath might be in the eviction. Your Goliath might be you getting fired. It might be a sickness. I don't know what your giant is, but we declare we giant killers in the name of Jesus. The Bible says this. Here we go. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Okay, y'all missed that, right? This, this is what Israel saying, like, have y'all seen this guy? Y'all seen this giant? Have y'all, have y'all seen this dude from Mac and B. Wick? Are you kidding me? <laughs> have you seen this man that's come up? Watch this. Surely to defy Israel he has come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him the king lost my crowd right there. Y'all, you don't understand. I'm ready to run right there. The king will enrich him. Y'all not catching this. With a few riches. With great riches. And then say, and will give him his daughter. Minister 80 said, I'll take his son. Okay. Amen. And make his father's house free. Oh, man. Free. Free. (laughs) Go to the next verse. Watch this. Free in Israel. I thought at least two of y'all was going to shout right there. Because we need to go back to 20. Was that 24? Was that 24? 25? Let's do that again, because I think that, that, that went to the wrong section. Let's try that again. I think th- this might be the section over here that might catch it. I'm not sure. They might get it. We'll see what happened on this one. Let's try this again. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel, he has come up, and, and uh, it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free. If you don't shout about nothing else, that free part right there ought to be your moment to shout right there. That means your debt is canceled. Oh, my God. Y'all missed that. That means whatever you got, the debt will be canceled. Why? Why are they going to do this? He said, I'm going to give you great riches. Okay? I'm going to give you a boo. And watch this. You're going to be out of debt. See, some of y'all maybe forgot the type of God that we serve right there. Because the king going to do this. He didn't say, well, how much you owe? He said, it don't matter how much you owe. I got you. But watch this. The key to this is, I need you to solve this problem. That's what we tend to miss today. He said, I'm only going to do this if you see this as an opportunity. Yo, okay, y'all missed it. He's saying, watch this. Okay? The person... That comes up against this giant and kills the giant. Oh, my goodness. They're going to get great riches. They're going to get a boo. And they're going to be out of debt. But the key is you got to address this situation. Everybody else saw it as a catastrophe. You seen this big old boy? You see how he rolled? But God always got an underdog laying in the cut. God always got somebody that really don't qualify for the job. And that's why God will raise somebody up and make them qualified to be the one to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? 
You need somebody that's going to say, what is cancer when I got God on my side? What is diabetes when I got God on my side? Come on, come on, come on. What is student loans? What is debt? Come on now, in the name of Jesus, when I got God on my side. If God be for me, I don't care how big the problem is. I don't care how tall the problem is. But if God be for me, who can be against me? He says he's going to make them free. So while everybody else was scared and saw it as a catastrophe, I need y'all to throw that finger up. One finger. One boy. And I'm glad you got your finger up because you are one person. All it takes is you to be the one to break that generational curse in your family. All it takes is you. You can be that one that say, I'll go and fight against this giant. I'll be the one to go and get the victory. And won't nobody else go, send me, I'll go. Watch this, y'all. He says right here, here we go. Verse 26. And David spake to the men and stood by them saying, wait, wait, what's going to be done to the person that do this? See, y'all missed it. Hopefully y'all not the ones that's running from the problem. But you wanna, you're the one that's going to clarify it and say, wait, 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 wait. What am I going to get if I do this? See, y'all miss y'all moment right there. What am I going to get? <laughs> If I win this battle over depression, what, what, what's going to happen to me? Ooh, Jesus, what, what am I going to get? If I face this anxiety, what am I going to get? If I look cancer in the eye and get the victory, what am I going to get? It's amazing David never even considered that he could die in this situation. He's talking about, oh, y'all missed, oh, y'all missed it right there. <laughs> he ain't talking about what I can lose in this situation. But when you know you got God on your side, you ought to say, no, what am I going to get when I come out of this thing? Because he promised me with long life, he going to satisfy me and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. In him I live and in him I move and have my very being. I'm not going to die in this situation. I'm going in and I'm coming out victorious. He said, what am I going to get? <sighs> y'all miss y'all moment to shout. <laughs> he never considered that he could die in this. I'm going in there and I'm about to get something. I'm about to go in there, watch this, and I'm about to set some people free. I'm going in there, and I'm going to deliver some folks. I'm coming out, matter of fact, on top in the name of Jesus. He says this, who taketh away the reproach? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, y'all need to understand right there when it says uncircumcised, that means that the Philistine did not have a covenant. Oh, Jesus. And this is something that God had to remind me of the other day. He said, you got to get back to knowing your covenant. Amen. Right. You got to get back to walking in authority. And some of us have forgotten our authority. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You, you forgot who you are. You started letting the world dictate to you this and that instead of calling those things which be not as though they were. Start declaring, no, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Come on. You got to get back to knowing your covenant. Oh, watch this. He says, who is this Philistine that don't have a covenant with God? Some of y'all are afraid of folks that don't have my God, that don't have a covenant with God. How dare you be afraid of them? Well, you're going to lose your job. Wait a minute. As long as I don't lose my covenant. Oh. See, when I got a covenant, God will give me another job. I ain't got to worry about folks and I ain't got to be kissing nobody behind and all that stuff with, to just try to keep a job. Wait a minute. I got a covenant with God. And some of you right now need to watch this. You need to let every sickness that's bothering you. You need to let that sickness know I got a covenant with God and you don't have no right to be in my body. I am in the image of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So I speak to every cell, every organ. Come on, every bloodstream right now for you to line up in the name of Jesus. You got to get back to talking covenant. We've gotten hoodwinked and bamboozled to start just accepting life. And start, yeah, there you go right there. We started settling. When Jesus was in the boat, 
He did not say, somebody get an umbrella. <laughs> Put on your galoshes. Get your raincoat. It's raining. He got up there and said, no, 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 no. Peace be still. You serve the God that will speak to the weather. How dare you not speak to everything that's bothering you? He said, I've given you access to the kingdom. Whatsoever you say, heaven will be in agreement with it. And you got to get back. Come on, heaven. I need you in agreement with what I'm saying. Oh, Jesus. And I declare, if you ain't saying nothing, you ain't making nothing. Come on. You got to get back to talking. Do we have any blind Bartimaeuses up in here right now? <laughs> see, blind Bartimaeus couldn't see nothing. He couldn't see it, but he did hear some stuff. He did hear some things that was going on. And he heard that Jesus was in the area. And he started crying out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Some of y'all going through some stuff right now, and you almost can't see your way out. But you can yell for Jesus in the midst of what you face it and declare, have mercy on me. Even if you can't see your way out right now. Blind Bartimaeus started yelling and screaming. But here's the crazy part. People tried to shut him up. And people have been trying to shut you up. They've been trying to hinder your prayer life. They've been telling you not to fast, don't give, don't live right, because they say it don't take all that. <laughs> and you need to tell them it may not take all that to be you, but I'm not trying to be you. I'm trying to be like God. I'm trying to be Christ-like. I'm created in his image. So guess what? If I got to yell out Jesus, I'm going to yell right now, and I need y'all to scream like you losing your mind and call on the name of Jesus. Maybe you forgot that the Bible says it's something about the name of Jesus. Whew. Demons got to back up. I declare right now, the anointing on your life is irritating demons right now. And you need to call on the name of Jesus right now. Whew. Yeah, yeah. My God, my God. My goodness. Take the wheel. <laughs> Take the wheel, take the wheel, take the car, take the whole thing right now. At this point, I need you to drive because I've been messing this thing up. So I need you to take the wheel. I declare he is not your co-pilot. He is your pilot right now. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this? See, I need y'all. I need y'all to get gangster with it. See, some of y'all have lost your bounce. See, when you was a heathen, you had a little, little bounce to yourself. Who is this Philistine? Who? 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 Who talking? Who said? What? 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 Where they at? Where they coming? See, y'all done got saved. Yeah. And you done got quiet. <laughs> but we need you to be saved and still be hood. <laughs> Come on, there you go. Have hood, have holy. There you go right there in the name of Jesus. David said, who is this Philistine? That's running his mouth. Okay, okay. He, see, David is sitting back saying, oh, he going to learn today. See, while he talking, running his mouth, he going to learn today. So I don't know what your giant is. You ought to say, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. Come on, see, y'all missed it right there. See, the same way David was speaking about this giant, you ought to be speaking concerning your giant. See, the problem is you keep telling God about your giant. And you out of order for that. God is saying, don't tell me about your giant. Go tell my, your giant about me. Uh, but who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Okay, y'all. Can, can I go there for a second? You have survived way too much for you to sit here and be in your pity party right now with the name of Jesus. Come on. Your resume is awesome. You have been through so much. There's a survivor anointing on your life, and I declare as your pastor, this too shall pass. You don't let this stuff talk to you. See, that's the problem. You allow stuff to talk. You allow your wallet to talk to you. You allow your ATM machine to talk to you. Come on, you allow your mail to talk to you. 
Oh, come on, y'all. You allow all this stuff to talk to you. The question is, when you going to start talking back? How is it you grew up in Detroit and wouldn't let folks talk to you any old kind of way? But now when it comes down to spiritual things, you let the devil with his defeated self talk to you any old kind of way. And he is defeated. See, I need y'all to get back to. I know y'all. I know y'all. Some of y'all probably undefeated. And I ain't talking about I'm talking about in the natural. Some of y'all was. Nice with it. And some of y'all got some references. <laughs> some of y'all have put some hands on folks and you got references. OK, <laughs> everybody go act safe like you ain't never beat nobody up. You live in Detroit. Some folks didn't, didn't got it. So here's the question. I'm going to try to see if I can get this done right. See if y'all going to work with me on this one. OK, don't raise your hand. But anybody in here ever beat somebody up? Okay, amen. I got <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's me. I beat somebody up, right, right, right. But after you beat them up, you ever heard them talking mess again? Yeah. Come on. And your response was, <laughs> y'all already said, it. you want some more? Why we can't take that same energy against the devil? He's a defeated foe. Devil, you want some more? You, you want some more? Come on, you, you, you want some more of it? Come on, y'all. I'm preaching to y'all right now. That same energy that you used back then, why can't we use that against the devil? You want some more of this? I'm tired of you messing with my money. I'm tired of you messing with my mind. I'm tired of you messing with my health. You want some more of this? This ain't the first time the devil messed with you. You've won before. What makes you think you're not going to win today? Remember, he's a defeated foe. Amen. He's already lost. So he's going to try to talk you out, my God. He's going to try to talk you out of showing up. Because if you don't show up, it's a forfeit. Jesus. And he's saying, I'm trying to get you to forfeit your blessing. I'm trying to get you to forfeit your healing. I'm trying to get you to forfeit your deliverance. I'm trying to get you to forfeit your prosperity. Watch this. When it was all said and done, I'm preaching to somebody right now. When Samuel goes to Jesse's house, he says, one of your sons is king. And he says, uh, okay, I got this one over here. And he said, yeah, but he tended to the sheep. They said, go get him. All David did was show up. Okay, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. I'm going to try that again. Y'all missed that. All he did was show up. Okay, y'all missed that. I'm about to help y'all out. I'm going to help y'all out. Okay. David showed up dirt. <sighs> dirt. He was not perfect. He, had, he was smelling like sheep. He had dirt on him and grass and probably had mess on him. But yet when your name is called, <laughs> hey, when your name is called, I'm just going to show up regardless of what I look like, regardless of what I'm going through. My name got called. And I'm just going to show up. Every issue, every challenge, everything I'm facing for the simple fact, my number has come up. I may not be perfect and everything may not be great, but I'm showing up. And the devil, don't, he just don't want you to show up. And that's why he's attacking your mind. Because if you don't show up, it's declared a forfeit. Because he know he can't win. If you show up, he cannot win. I, I need y'all to catch this. If you show up, he cannot win. If you show up, he cannot win. If you show up, he cannot win. He's trying to defeat you with a forfeit. Come on, y'all. Can we give God three hallelujahs right now? Come on. Come on. Come on. Now shout and say, I'm going to show up. Come on, give God a victory shout right now. Come on, I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. Come on, be seated, be seated. Yeah, yeah. He says this. But who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies? Thank you, Randy. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Who he messing with? Army. Hope you catching this. He's missing the armies of the living God. 
He already know I can't deal with God. But everybody that's representing God, I'm going to try to come for him. Y'all, come on. I hope y'all catching this. <laughs> come on, come on. When it's all said and done, we understand it's something about the name of Jesus. Right? But them bills are showing up in your name. Okay, y'all, I'm going to try that again. Okay, I'm going to try this again, see? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's something about his name, but DTE, <laughs> Discover, Still Loans, <laughs> come on. All that stuff is showing up in your name. Y'all better catch this. So that lets you know the giant is really coming after you. Ah, what you going to do about it, Cletus? Say it again. I'm going to show up. Can we keep going, y'all? Oh, Jesus, this is good. This is good. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Y'all getting this? Go to Revelations 12 and 11. Come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, Revelations. This is for my 007 saints. My secret society Christians. My incognito Negro. <laughs> y'all ready <laughs> here y'all go here we go y'all said y'all gonna show up right and they overcame him here we go now you're getting your shout y'all gonna understand now yeah the way to get the victory the way we gonna win this thing and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb yeah, somebody said something about the blood of Jesus. My God, my God. Can we go there for a minute? It's first Sunday. We all right, can we go there for a minute about that blood? Yeah. Oh. I don't know nothing about geometry. I'm not that good at trigonometry. But one thing I do know. I know that it was the blood for me. One day. When I was lost, he died on the cross. And then they said, I know it was the blood for me. But then the songwriter said, the blood that gives me strength. I'm talking to some folks that felt weak today. Sometimes you got to remember about the blood. It's designed to give you strength. On them days when you feel like you don't feel like getting out the bed and, and facing life, you got to remember it's the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will, my God, I wish I had a church up in here, that it will never. See, what's amazing we got all this technology now, but you let a little storm come and it knocked the power out. But I thank God that when storms come, that the blood don't never lose its power. Because we deal with storms all the time. And we declare the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will My God, can we say hallelujah one time for God in the name of Jesus? I'm trying to let it go. But one of the things I love about the blood, yeah, yeah, watch this, y'all. One thing about that blood, it don't have an expiration date. It's good. It stays good. It's going to be good today. It's going to be good tomorrow. It's good next week. It don't expire. <laughs> Can we keep going? Maybe y'all don't understand. We thank God for that blood, but don't you realize? Can we, can we rewind the tape on this for a second? And they overcame. Maybe you're not catching on. The blood has power to help you overcome some stuff. It helps you to overcome some challenges. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word. Oh, 
of God. I hope I hope y'all catching on. They overcame not just by the blood, but also. So maybe you're gonna quit being 007 and being so secretive about what you didn't been through. Maybe you're gonna quit being so quiet about the things you had to face. Maybe you don't realize if you get loud with your testimony. There's an anointing that's going to help you win the next battle. The Bible says this is how you overcome. You got to tell people about what God has already done for you. Why are you scared to let people know? You want people to think your life has been so perfect your whole life. As if you ain't never needed God. You need to start letting people know, no, nah, my life was a mess. Let me tell you what the Lord did for me. Matter of fact, you already know because you was right there. You knew I was a new fool. The stuff that I used to do, it wasn't going to be no book. It wasn't going to be no pamphlet. It wasn't going to be no talk show to get me together. I needed God Almighty to get me right. You got to let people know what the Lord has done. Watch this. Oh, this is good. This is good. Watch this. God is saying, if you don't give me glory about what I did before, why should I do something now? Because you ain't giving me no credit for what I've already done in your life. With your plagiarizing self. As if you did it. You won't give me no glory. You won't give me no honor. You won't even represent me. You won't tell people what I've done. So why would I help you now? That's why we got to change the game and let everybody know what the Lord has done for me. Why? I'm grateful and I need him to do it again. Amen. And give somebody hope. That's what the whole Bible is about. That's why we read their stories. Paul, John, Peter, David, we read their story. Somebody need to hear your story. Come on, you got a Shaquita chapter five. <laughs> come on, come on. That's a, okay, y'all gonna play me right now. Whatever your name is, you got some chapters to that story. You got some chapters. And some folks need to read your story. They need to hear your chapters. Your chapters wasn't always good. Come on, tell them about the chapter when you lost the house. Okay, y'all. Because see, we can tell them at the end of the story. But they need to read chapter 5 and chapter 4 and chapter 3 when everything wasn't going according to plan. And then they need to read that chapter about when God stepped in oh, yeah. Yeah. and turned everything around. We got to give him some glory, y'all. We got to give him some honor. We got to let it be known. We got to make his praise glorious, y'all. Come on, let's close this out in the name of Jesus. Is anybody getting this today? Is this a catastrophe or an opportunity? Come on, it's an opportunity. Whatever you are facing, declare this is an opportunity. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. I need y'all to speak it and declare it over your life right now. This is an opportunity. Come on, because see, we can thank God. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. We can thank God for the house. Thank him for the car. Come on, we can thank him for the, the money. Come on, we can thank him for the fool. But see, one writer said it was good for me that I was afflicted. Because I learned some stuff. And now I'm remembering that all things working for my good. So right now, I am about to literally hire and give my trouble a job. Okay, y'all missed it. If it's working for my good, it's working for me. I'm hiring it. Y'all better catch what I'm saying. I'm hiring my trouble. The very thing that was bullying me, now you're going to work for me. You're working for my good. I don't know how you're going to do it. That's not my concern, but you work for me now, and you're going to make something good come out of every situation I'm dealing with. You work for me now. That's not a catastrophe. It's an opportunity. You work for me now. Uh, first Samuel. First Samuel 17, 33. Oh, Jesus. Are y'all getting this? Whew. I hope so, because I didn't sweat my suit out. Praise God. Uh, hey, amen. First Samuel 17, 33. Here we go. Y'all ready? 
Lord Jesus, give me the strength to get through this without running around this church. <sighs> All right, hurry up, y'all. Oh, this is shrimp with cocktail sauce right here, boy. With a Tahitian tree. And not sharing. <laughs> that make it better. I ain't giving you nothing. <laughs> I'm greedy when it come down to shrimp, boy. Well, that's the thing. I remember years ago I had bought me a pound of shrimp, had me a nice Tahitian treat, and here come Taylor. Dad, can I get one? Whoa. I said, Taylor, I bought me a pound for me. Now, if I give you one, I don't have a pound no more. <laughs> y'all gotta give y'all gotta pray for me when it comes down to shrimp. My my mentality concerning shrimp is just a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean I gave her some. I wasn't happy about it, but it's like gone. Just gone. Gone. Oh, y'all need to understand my mindset when it comes down to shrimp. Like I was on this kick to lose weight and I went and got me a pound because I figured if I'm at this weight. And if I eat one pound, I'm only going to gain one pound. How I many of y'all know that didn't work? I'm like, wow, I only ate one pound. This scale wrong. Come on, y'all. <laughs> now, I ain't count none of that. The, 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 the grease, none of that. Batter, cocktail sauce, none of that. Tahitian treat, it's only supposed to be one pound. Come on, y'all. Here we go. And Saul said to David, oh, this is good. I hope I need y'all. Oh, this is about to be good, y'all. This is about to be so good. Here we go. And Saul said to David, and Saul said to David, and Saul said to David, yeah, you better watch folks that speaking into your life because uh, everybody ain't really for you. And don't think that you're going to do certain things that God has told you to do. And here's Saul right here telling David. You not able. Y'all missed that right there. I just, okay, okay. Y'all missed that right there. <laughs> there you go right there. For the simple fact, since you said I'm not able, I just became able. Matter of fact, my mentality is don't tell me what I can't do. Because just because you said I can't do it, I'm going to do it twice. Y'all missed that. For the simple fact, you said I can't do it, I'm going to do it twice. You better watch who's speaking into your life. You better make sure it lines up with the word of God. Here it is right here. And Saul said to David, thou art not able. God is able to do just what he said he will do. And now somebody going to say you can't do it. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody right now. You ain't able to. Come on, do you know the statistics with cancer? You're not able to get the victory. You can't pay your house off less than 30 years. You can't start that business. Come on, you can't do that. What are you? No, it's never been done before. You can't do that. That's why you got to let people know if it ain't never been done before, that's why I'm here. Somebody got to do it, and God has anointed me to be the one. That's why I'm here. Don't you let folks talk you out of the things of God? And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth. He is saying you don't qualify. Jesus, some of y'all missing it right now. There are some things where you've been, yeah, you've been wrestling in your mind about what you really qualify for. Some of y'all are, my God, yeah, I'll say that. Some of y'all are waiting on other folks to come into your life before you start doing certain things. Come on now. Here's Saul saying, you're not old enough. You don't qualify to take down this giant. Come on, this is the same giant. Come on, it took out your grandmother. Your mama dealt with this. What makes you think you're going to be different? Come on, on y'all. You got you to gotta be careful of what folks will say because before you know it, they be to put that in your spirit. And this is why your testimony is so powerful. Catch this, y'all. He said, thou art a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. 
Oh, Jesus. Go to verse 34. He said, this is all he's been doing since he was your age. This is all he's been doing. His, all his life he's been fighting. Come on. <laughs> now, here we go. Can we go there? Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this part? And David said to Saul, that was your moment to shout right there. Okay, y'all missed it right there. You're not going to tell me what I can't do. Come on, y'all. Where the hoodness at? Where you at? How you going to let somebody tell you what you can't do? See, if this was really, if David was a member of Rock Church, I could tell you how this story would have went. I could see David saying, hold, hold, hold on a second. Don't, don't sit up here and tell me what I can't do because I see you up in this tent hiding. I don't see you trying to do nothing. I don't see, ain't you the king around here? You ought to be the first one out there fighting. <laughs> but you over here talking to me. Joe, scare yourself. I told you I was going to go fight the dude. So why you hating? Oh, y'all miss it. <laughs> why, why, why you hating? You want, ooh, Jesus. Isn't it amazing that folks won't do certain things for themselves or they won't do things, but when you do it, now they got a problem. They got so much to say. I ain't see you trying to help me. I ain't see you putting in on this. Okay. And David said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. Y'all better catch this. What is he doing? I think he's doing revelations. He's speaking the word of his own testimony. Because right now he don't have a scripture nowhere around. He don't have a Bible nowhere around. But one thing he does have is a memory about what God did for him. And so now he's saying, I'm about to stand on my own testimony. Because I may not have a Bible right now, but I do have a testimony about what God has already done for me. That's why your testimony is so powerful. Even, even if you don't know all the scriptures, even if you don't have a Bible handy, you always got your testimony that you can speak about what God has already done for you. My God, he says this, thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and it took a lamb out of the flock. My God, 35. Can we go? Can we go? 35. And I went out after him. <laughs> Somebody say not on my watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, the enemy got the nerve to come up in your camp and try to take some stuff. You ought to say, not on my watch. Uh-uh, I'm coming to get back everything the devil stole from me. And I declare that same anointing that's on me is on you. And you ought to say, I'm going to recover everything that the devil has stolen from me. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but the violence. We, I'm taking it back. Oh, I don't know who this is for. You ought to say, I'm taking it back right now with the name of Jesus. Come on. I'm taking my healing back. I'm taking my deliverance back. I'm taking my smile back. I'm taking my life back. I will no longer be in bondage. I'm taking my life back. He said, he said I went out after him and I smote him <laughs> and delivered it out of his mouth. I liked it. And he said, and when he rose against me, Jesus, I heard that. I heard that. I heard that. There are some things that's coming against you, Jesus, because you've been fighting for other folks. You've been praying and interceding for other people, and now there are certain things that's turning on you, and you're trying to figure out where this come from, because you've been fighting all your, oh my goodness, because you've been already fighting, and now this thing said it turned on you. He said, it rose against me. Oh, I feel like running. You know what David did? I need y'all. Come on, Greg, you see it. He said, that thing turned against me. You know what David did? He said, I caught it by his beard. Y'all missed that right there. Come on, come on, come on, Leslie. I got face to face with this thing. Like, who you think you barking at? Who you growling at? Don't you know I'm a child of God? You are not going to be threatening me. I got face to face with that thing. And I don't know who this is for, but I feel God right now with the name of Jesus. Some of y'all need to quit ducking and dodging. And it's time for you to go face to face with some stuff. See, you're more than a conqueror, but the problem is you won't confront it. You got to confront that thing in order to conquer that thing. I'm reminded when I was a kid and we used to go to gym class. One of my favorite games in gym class, 
It was called dodgeball. I loved it. I was nice with it. I could dodge like crazy. And some of you in your walk, oh my goodness, in your walk, what you been doing? You been dodging stuff. Oh, I'm good at dodging stuff. Ain't going to get me. Ha, ha, ha. I'm good at dodging stuff. But in order to help somebody else out. I ain't dodging nothing this time. In order to help somebody else out, I'm going to have to stand there and I'm going to have to catch some stuff. And once I catch it with him, come on in here and have some fun with me. You got to get face to face with some stuff. This time the devil needs to blink. He said, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Can we go to verse 36? Yeah. Watch this, y'all. Look at this boy preaching to himself. He said, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. Come on, church, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. He said, I slew both of them. And this uncircumcised Philistine. Come on, see, see, the same thing you facing right now. Yeah, yeah, the same God that brought me out back then. Yeah, he going to bring me out of this too. <laughs> and just like I got the victory over that, come on, I'm going to have the victory over this. Come on, you got to see this as an opportunity. David said, this big boy is going to be just like that lion and just like that bear. Quit saying this is different, though. I'm hearing that. Quit saying this is different. If God ever healed you from anything, don't you dare say this is different. God is a healer, and that's the bottom line. Whether it's a common cold, whether it's an allergy, whether it's the flu, whether it's diabetes, whether it's cancer, whether it's anxiety, he is a healer. Listen, quit putting characteristics and stigmas on certain things as if God can't do nothing about that one. David said, just like God helped me with this lion and he helped me with this bear, he's going to help me with this too right here. He said, he says, Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Go to verse 37, y'all. We about to close it out. Here we go. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he might. It's a strong possibility. See, when you got a covenant with God, he will. He will. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go. <laughs> and even though I ain't with you. Okay, y'all missed that. Y'all missed y'all more with the shout right there. <laughs> come on, come on, y'all. Because <laughs> some folks said they're going to be, be with you. But all of a sudden, oh, I got to work. I ain't going to be able to make it. Yeah. Oh, I can't do that. But Saul, like, even though I ain't going out there with you. <sighs> See. It's amazing when them same folks said what you can't do. Now, all of a sudden, you want to give me a word of encouragement now. Now, all of a sudden, you say, well, let the Lord be with you. I need y'all to catch this, y'all. See, David could have followed it up and said, he's been with me the whole time. He's been with me the whole time. <laughs> That's why I'm able to, have, to be confident about this. That's why I'm here. He's with me. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes you got to remind yourself, whatever you face it, you got to remind yourself, God is still with me. Even if it looked like I'm losing. Even if it looked like I'm losing, God is still with me. Watch this. Here you go. Is this a catastrophe? Or opportunity. opportunity. David looked back over his life. Y'all better catch this because this is for you. And the things he had already been through was encouragement 
for what he was getting ready to face. And there are some things in your life that God allowed you to go through. Y'all better catch this to strengthen you for what's coming. Y'all better catch this as we close this out. Y'all ready? Is this a catastrophe or opportunity? Check this out. Goliath wasn't even David's giant. Hope y'all catching where I'm going with this. You may have, see, you thought it was about you. You thought this whole sermon was about you. That about what you facing. Maybe the opportunity is about what somebody else is facing. And God is anointing you to go fight that giant for them. So when you see somebody going through, is that a catastrophe? Or is that an opportunity? Let me pay your light bill. Okay, y'all missed that right there. It might be a catastrophe for, for them. But you, you see it as an opportunity to be a blessing to them. And as you're a blessing to them, God going to take care. This is an opportunity. Watch this. And I've done that before. I've done, can I use you? They're like, what? What? Can I use you? They're like, well, what you about to do? I just want to give you this. And I'm like, yes. Got me some seed in the ground. And they needed it for whatever they was going to deal with. I hope y'all catch where I'm going. See, it may have been a catastrophe to them. Remember, we read the first scripture. All the men saw, is, they, they was afraid of Goliath. But David, he saw as an opportunity. Remember, David was really at his father's house. He just, I just happened to stop by to bring y'all some food. What's going on? What's, what's going on? Who was who that, who that talking like that? Who, who, is, who, who is that? Why these guys run? Y'all know how we do. Why, why they running? Why, why they, why they, <laughs> what are we running for? What, what's going on? This boy right here? This, 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 this what everybody running from? This what everybody's scared of? This what the issue is? Right. Now, now, what you say gonna happen to the person that take this guy out? Because this is light work right here. Right, man. Oh, y'all missed that. This light work right this, this bothering you? Oh, this light work right here. Y'all, I wish I could, somebody can catch on. Is it a catastrophe? Yes, sir. Or is this an opportunity? Yes, sir. Watch this, y'all. As we close this out next week, we were looking at some catastrophes up in here. Is this a catastrophe? Come on, Desi, what you say? This is horrible. <laughs> or is this an opportunity? You mean to tell me if I take care of God's house, he's going to take care of my house? Come on, stand to your feet in the name of Jesus right now. And it's not all about this. There are some people in your life. They may be facing some catastrophes. What you going to do about it, Cletus? Show me, Lord. Is it a catastrophe? Because it may be a catastrophe for them. But it's an opportunity for you. God's going to use you to show himself strong. But you can't run from the very thing they're already afraid of. Somebody got to go in the lion's den. Somebody got to go in the fiery furnace. Somebody, watch this, y'all, got to fight Goliath. Amen. Why not me? No more. Why me? Come on, no more. Why me? Why not me? <laughs> Elder Cooper, can I go there? Have you considered my servant Job? Since you're looking for somebody to mess with, I got somebody laying in the cut. And I'm so confident in them, they're going to go through it, get the victory, and I'm going to get some praise out of it. And this is what God has been doing with you. Your number has come up. Don't say, why me? Why not me? Your Bible looks like a coloring book. You got most scriptures highlighted. You got so much word in you. Why not you? You built for this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear that. Come on, come on. Tell your neighbor. Yeah. Tell your neighbor. They, you built for this. Tell your neighbor. You built for this. Come on. You built for this. 
Battleships are built for battles. You built for this. I declare this is your finest hour. This is your defining moment. Come on. They talked about Daniel and the lions then. They talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the fiery furnace. They talked about Jonah and the whale. Come on. They talked about David and Goliath. Now it's time for them to talk about you. It's time for your story to be told. It's time for your grandbabies and your great grandbabies to hear what you did and what you went through. And they can look back over your life. They say, I may not, I may not know Shadrach. I may not know Daniel. But I know Big Mama. I knew Papa. And I remember when they back was against the wall. They used to take me to church and say, we got to pray about this. And every time we saw things change in the name of Jesus. Come on, we declare our God is so big. He is so strong. Come on, he's so mighty. I wish I had some believers that could sing that one time. Come on. That go beyond. Goes beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah. My God, he's so good. He's so good to me. to me In the name of Jesus. Come on, with every head by, every eye closed so right now. Strong. Come on. He's so mighty. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God. Come on, we intercede right now with the name of Jesus. Me, goes beyond that Father, whatever catastrophes are going on, so we will see them as opportunities. He's so good. For your glory to be seen. To me. We told you before to yeah, use us. Yeah. And yeah, we're ready for so your work. To me. Yeah, yeah. No more running. Yeah, no more joining in with everybody else yeah, being in catastrophe. Yeah, yeah, but we can do all things. So good to through me. Christ who strengthens us. Yeah, and we declare victory in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God an ignorant shout right now in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look like this is a family meeting today, but just in case, I don't know if there's anyone here who desires to be saved or desires to be a member of this church. We declare this altar is open in the name of Jesus. Church, I need you to start changing your mindset. This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. No more catastrophes. You got God on your side. Maybe you forgot about that. How is this a catastrophe when you've got God on your side? You know what he said to us? Y'all know what God told us to do? And sometimes we tend to forget. He said in his word, give all our burdens to him and leave them there. But we keep going back. God, I'm going to need to pick this back up for a second. Give it to him and leave it there. Every catastrophe. Watch this. The Bible says when you're weak. So you know what that means? A lot of times he needs you to get out the way. Y'all missed that. A lot of times, okay, watch this. <laughs> when we weak, he's strong. So he's flexing, he's ready, but then you in the way. Like, will you move? You want me to handle this or what? Will you move? Because every time you start thinking about this again, you're taking it back from me. 
in the name of Jesus. Church, I hope something was said today that encouraged you, that blessed you today in the name of Jesus. Change your mindset. Catastrophes and opportunities in the name of Jesus. We roll with opportunities in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and ears have heard. We thank you for this message on today, Father. That as long as you're on our side, we declare these are opportunities. My God, I hear that. It's a catastrophe when you're not there. But when you're there, it's an opportunity. So, Father, we give you honor and praise. And we declare right now as a unified body of believers that the devil is defeated. Yep. And Jesus is still Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hug somebody before you go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First principles class is Wednesday, 7 o'clock. First principles. In Jesus' name.